Live from the RBC, this is Media Park Radio. Okay, and now welcome to Aaron, so Strategic Product Manager for uh, Red Bee Media. Hello, uh, thank welcome, you. Welcome to RBC. It's great to be here, thanks for having me on. Uh, you're welcome. Now, uh, no pressure, uh, I want you to tell us and all of our listeners, thousands of listeners, all about uh, Red Bee Media. Absolutely. Well, uh, Red Bee Media has a very rich history. Uh, we uh, have our roots back uh, with the BBC. We uh, started life really as uh, BBC Broadcast Limited uh, and became Red Bee Media in 2005. Um, and since that period, we have uh, won uh, numerous uh, clients uh, to add to our portfolio and extended our services enormously. Uh, we provide playout services, media management services, uh, content discovery, um, OTT, um, access services, um, and we operate playout in six countries around the world. Amazing. And do you think that um, there are any other competitors out there for Red Bee Media that offer the range that Red Bee has today? No, I don't think so. I think, um, you know, capitalising off our experience um, uh, and knowledge, uh, particularly from the BBC days as well, uh, really sort of sets us apart. We've got a huge amount of knowledge within uh, our company um, and we offer services to a, a wide range of clients. And uh, so what are we showing on the stand today? It's really exciting. Um, so um, in London, uh, we've been working on a proof of concept uh, playout platform. Uh, which is 100% software only. So uh, this means there's no hardware uh, in, the, in the playout transmission stack. Um, and uh, crucially, uh, we're able to deliver 100% uncompressed IP playout. Um, and we believe we're the first in the world to be able to do this. Now, can you tell us a bit more about playout? Imagine that many of us don't really know what playout is. What would you, how would you explain playout to everyone out there? So um, I think the best way really um, is to uh, imagine that Playout sits within uh, our value chain within the areas that we call publish and consume. Uh, we use the terms publishing and consumption to collectively describe the process of transmitting content to audiences, uh, whether that be linear Playout, um, uh, VOD, uh, satellite or IP. Um, and essentially, uh, Playout is uh, taking a schedule, which is typically prepared by a customer, um, and playing out each item uh, live to air to an audience. Um, and it can be through different mediums, as I say, OTT or VOD as well. Um, and uh, we can also add all of the different elements into that package, such as voiceovers, graphics, um, and everything in between. I mean, I remember I've had this discussion with several clients in the past, whereas that we're really the last uh, editorial touch point That's between right. before the, uh, the signal leaves and heads out into the uh, universe for, of TV and OTT. Absolutely. It's so um, you mentioned earlier on about um, what we're showing on the stand, talked yes. about uh, this our virtualized uh, software-based playout. Um, what do you think are the driving reasons for change? Why are Red Bee Media developing that kind of technology for its customers? So I think uh, there are probably three main reasons really which are driving us um, and uh, the industry as a whole to adapt and change. Um, and I think it's no illusion that there's a technology evolution taking place. Um, you know, the way that we consume uh, and watch media is changing rapidly. Um, there's also the customer needs, which are also vitally important. You know, um, uh, commercial revenues are really, really key. Um, and then uh, there's the market conditions, which, um, you know, uh, are, are changing uh, the way that the customer um, interacts and reacts uh, with the portfolio. So, uh, for example, we have streaming services, which are really competing um, for uh, the linear playout space. Um, and really sort of challenging uh, the way that we, uh, our customers can get commercial revenue. That's putting a lot of pressure on our customers. Uh, and equally, um, for content creation, um, that is uh, becoming more and more expensive. So, um, you know, the, the way that we can address those needs really is by exploiting uh, the technology evolution that's taking place uh, to meet those market needs, but most importantly, um, and which is our uh, main focus, meeting those customer needs. And we talked about customers 
Do you feel that they are under threat at the moment in traditional broadcasting from the fangs of this world, from Facebook, Amazon, uh, Google, are they, and Netflix? Are they, do you think they're actively seeing a challenge coming in which, which is affecting their audience figures? Do you, and do you think that in turn is changing the way they want to do business themselves? Absolutely. It, it definitely is changing the way that they want to do business. Um, I mean, as we know, there's uh, a lot of competition for uh, channels out there. Viewing figures aren't what they used to be in the 60s and 70s, for example. There's a lot of choice. And the way that we can watch that content um, has exploded exponentially, uh, either online or in the multitude of channels that are now available. Um, and that is eroding uh, the uh, commercial revenue that our uh, customers and clients can, can get. Now, when I started uh, in Playout uh, a long time ago, it took us about uh, six months to a year to build a new channel in Playout. Uh, my yes. first one being BBC HD service. Oh, yes, I remember that well. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but uh, tell us about what, what kind of timescales are we looking like now? What can Red B Media promise its customers when it's looking towards building a new service? So I think uh, that's definitely one of our uh, unique selling points at the moment. As part of the proof of concept that we've been uh, developing in London, um, we've been able to uh, massively speed up our deployment of channels and services. Typically, it would have taken uh, weeks or months um, to uh, spin up and configure a channel for broadcast. Now, uh, through the work that's happened through uh, previous contracts, but also uh, the work that we've done on the proof of concept, uh, we're able to spin up uh, new services and channels within hours. And that's a huge Amazing. advantage. Uh, it means, you know, uh, a customer, if they wanted to, uh, could uh, spin up a channel, uh, a pop-up channel with very little notice. And indeed, um, what we're showing at the moment um, here at IBC is um, uh, remote access into our proof of concept playout platform. Uh, we're able to remotely control that platform um, and um, uh, what we see is 100% uncompressed signals uh, via IP, which that, is the world first. That remote um, kind of principle is really important, isn't it? Because when, yeah. certainly when we started out, you saw that the technology and the operations and the monitoring all had to be very tightly located in That's the same right. premises. And much of that meant that we had to be in our customer's location as well. Indeed. How is that changing in the new technology environment? So, um, yes, I mean, as you say, traditionally playout services have um, come from co-located facilities, whereas you say the um, operational team have been in the same space as the um, hardware, um, the technology. Um, and we still offer services on those bases, particularly for our most complex channel scenarios. It probably still is the best way at the moment to be able to deliver those services, but in increasingly, however, we're moving into a remote-based model uh, whereby uh, the technology is operated remotely uh, over IP um, by an operational team that is not in the same place. And I think that's really important. It allows us flexibility and agility in many, many ways. What, do you think that adds extra new challenges to the way in which that business model works, not being down the hall from the customer? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you have to be pragmatic. Um, it does mean that you need to think about how you would address technical issues or uh, interact between uh, remote teams, um, operational or engineering teams, but um, through the experience that we've gained uh, over the last few years, we've become quite adept at that. Mm -hmm. And now, you mentioned earlier on about speed uh, being a key issue and being yeah. able to spin up a new channel within you know, literally hours. Um, what kind of use cases from a customer's perspective would that be useful for? So uh, you could imagine a, a client or customer might want a temporary uh, pop-up channel, say that they had some content that they wanted to play over Christmas, um, but only for that short period of time. Um, traditionally, it would have been far too expensive and cumbersome to set up a channel just for a very short period of time. Um, now, however, they will have the opportunity to be able to do that with very little notice which means that they can extend their portfolio and attract new commercial revenue opportunities. Very good. Now, um, what kind of customers and markets do you see will be most interested in this new type of technology? I think it has a far reach. Uh, typically, um, you know, we're initially focusing on what we term as thematic uh, channels. And that is channels that traditionally have pre-recorded content um, and are planned and scheduled quite far in advance. Um, 
However, um, there are obviously other opportunities within that to extend to live content as well. Um, eventually, uh, we intend to, to roll this out to very uh, complex channel scenarios as well. Um, but there's also, uh, really importantly, the opportunity for what we term uh, low, uh, low cost or simple channels. Uh, and they're the types of channels that play out content that, uh, you know, it might be a Barker channel, it will have no graphics at all, very, very simple. Um, but we'll be able to uh, offer those uh, customers an opportunity to get into the broadcasting space very cheaply. And do you see that there's any synergies with the other service lines that Rugby Media offer? Are you offering um, virtualized player as one uh, core area, or can you easily then bring in things like access services and content discovery and OTT? Indeed, at the moment, working very closely with media management. Um, obviously, that's an important part of our business um, and uh, very key to successful play out. Um, I can uh, definitely envisage that we'll be working very closely with our other partners within Red B, uh, Access Services and OTT. Uh, now, uh, on a completely different subject, off, off play out, so off your, uh, your kind of specialist subject, um, let's talk a bit about um, growth mindset because. Uh, Gary earlier on told us about how important it is, not just in his um, students, but also now increasing the industry about taking on new skills. How did, yes. you, how did you get to the role you are today? And how important is learning part of your job? Oh, you know, learning is vitally important. And I think um, it's safe to say there hasn't been a day where I haven't learned something. Um, every day I'm learning uh, and I'm very humbled, um, particularly with the rate of technology uh, evolution. Um, so I, I, I started working as uh, what we call a playout director, uh, working for the BBC, uh, UK TV, um, and numerous other clients as well. And a playout director works in the playout control room, um, and they uh, basically bring all the content together, and they put all of those elements that we discussed before together uh, and put that live to air. Um, I worked in that capacity for a number of years before uh, being promoted to an operational manager for the BBC portfolio channels, uh, where I held that position for eight years before moving into my current role. Um, I think, you know, learning is extremely important. Um, you need to be very motivated and interested and excited in technology and broadcast, um, because if you're not, you, you can't keep up with the rate of change. Hmm. And do you think operations knowledge is so important in the product? And line now. Do you think? Do you see it's more about operations or technology, or does it not really matter? It's about passion for the customer. Right? I see it as a blend of both, um, and including passion for the customer. You know, um, absolutely, our customer focus is really, really important. You know, what what it is that they need, we need to to keep that in mind. Um, but how we deliver things operationally is really, really key too. Um, there's no point trying to do something um, that we can't deliver. Um, so, for me, I found it's really uh, been quite beneficial being able to capitalise off my operational experience, um, to have experienced uh, life um, at the cutting edge, so to speak. Um, and technology is increasingly more important these days. Um, it, as things become more and more complicated, you need to, um, you know, um, increase your knowledge and you need to keep, keep up with that speed of change. And that's actually one of the most tricky balances to, to achieve, isn't it? Because uh, our customers want to see greater innovation. They want to see more uh, development in the technology area. To, that's right. As you say, reduce costs, increase, um, decrease the speed at which new channels are launched, take yes. those risks. Yet at the same time, we have to offer a 24-7, 100% available, uh, stable playouts and, and take them on the journey. Do you, as a strategic product manager, do you see ways in which some customers are more interested to take more risks these days? Um, I do, um, but you know, I think uh, fundamentally what we need to do in order to um, uh, advance what we're doing is to bring everybody onto a shared um, platform, um, a shared standardized platform. It is only through you uh, really doing this that we can then offer our customers the flexibility and agility that they're asking us for. Um, it's, it's, it's really vitally important because it's only then that we can reliably uh, predict the cost and process for affecting change uh, once we're operating using the same tools for um, serving all of the customers we have. Okay, now um, you've only just arrived at IBC yes. today. 
Um, and I just wanted to know if you have you already spotted what you would really like to go and look at when we let you off the stand. Is there something there that you're really excited about in the rest of the uh, exhibition? Uh, not yet, no. I mean, this is my first year at IBC, and I have to say I'm overwhelmed. It's uh, much bigger than I expected. It's uh, fantastic to have all of these uh, supplies and technology in one place. Um, I haven't had time yet to, to have a look, but I, I hope to do so for the end of the day. If we let you off, the stand. If you let me off. Okay, well, Erin, thanks for joining the show. It's been really great to hear from you and about the products that we're Thank launching. You. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for having me.